Ellen Herman, the First Presbyterian Church, will lead us in our invitation. Thank you, Ellen. Almighty God, you teach us in your word and through your prophets to seek the welfare of the city where we live. All of us here today share that purpose. We seek the welfare of Cape Girardeau and all its citizens. Be present with us and among us by your Holy Spirit. Grant to Mayor Fox and these council men and women your wisdom. Give them strength of purpose and concern for others. Help them to listen well and to communicate effectively by the decisions made and the work accomplished here today. May Cape Girardeau become a community of justice and peace. Make us worthy of your abundant blessings, we pray. Amen. 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 Would you join the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, presentations this evening. Uh, at this time we'll go right into communications and reports. Anybody have anything? I, Mayor, I sat in for you at the um, SIMPO meeting uh, held last week at the Osage Center uh, and got up to date um, with all the different organizations that were there. Scott got to fill me in. There was a a resolution that I guess had to be signed off on by Simpo for the IDOT, if I'm not mistaken. But other than that, it was a, a fairly quick meeting. That's good. So, glad I could go. Those are those are interesting. It gets a lot of different groups together. Jackson, MoDOT, um, designees from Magnet University, Singapore. So, uh, thanks for letting me go. Anybody else? So, uh, not everybody speaks at once. What about this weekend? Oh, yeah. This weekend, uh, I, I, the underdogs I hear are the firemen up at the show me center. Uh, now, granted, they're always cooking at the house, but I hear the police have some tricks up their sleeves. But, of course, I'm talking about the uh, When F Pigs Fly barbecue contest that's uh, should be fun for the whole community and uh, 30 teams from all across the Midwest and we have KPD going against Cape Girard Fire, Sheriff's Department and who else Brian? Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol. So uh, and I hear there's some some garbs and threads they're going to be wearing too so it should be interesting. I hope everybody can make it out and uh, it's a neat event. Well, first of its kind. So How's that? Is that competition Saturday? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then they'll be selling, I think you can help judge. They'll be the public can help judge, pay a, a small fee and eat eat the food. Hopefully it's edible by, by the <laughs> on both crews. So. Public will judge the Heroes Cup and then they'll have judges for the the competitors that are in the, the I guess the pro category. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. I hope there's a really good turnout for everybody. So. Where in the? Oh, I did it last time too. Uh, it's at the Show Me Center, indoor Show Me Center, all day Saturday. I believe it's five or ten dollars admission. Uh, ten dollar admission. They've got to eat too. Eat. They have cooking classes. They've got some entertainment for kids and and everything. So it should be pretty cool. I think it's pretty much going. Starting at like 10 a.m., doors open, going to 10 o'clock at night, 11, something like that. Yeah. And then there's rumors that they're going to be selling their grills afterwards. Yes, correct. Yes. 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 Grills yes. 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 competition. Yes. 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 Discount. Discount. All of them will be yeah. discounted. Nice. Yes. Smoking Brothers Grills. Yeah. Yeah. So, Good. neat deal. They'll sell me out. First of its kind, an indoor barbecue contest. That's amazing. But if they can do. Chuck pulls and a lot of 
throw stuff in yeah. there with dust going everywhere. <laughs> they can do that, right? At least all the seats are there. And fire, right. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, anybody else? I don't really have anything to report. I was gone last week. That's why Robbie said in for me. Uh, it up, Scott. Uh, just a couple of things for council. Uh, you have at your uh, at your place a couple of uh, <laughs> scheduling items. One of them is the uh, calendar looking and where we are seeing if there are times when you might be available to go to um, to uh, Jefferson City and uh, talk with our legislators. We've, we've uh, uh, this is a <laughs> calendar that uh, Amanda is keeping. Uh, we sent it to you for online if you want are, are interested. But if you have some time, we're going to be in Jeff City anyway. Uh, we'd like to identify those times uh, to keep in constant contact with our uh, our legislators and then have them um, you know take us around for and introduce to others uh, uh, so that you might uh, meet them and and promote uh, legislation that is advantageous for our city. And, can, uh, can you tell us the date you will be up there already? Um, yes, the week of the 29th, 30th, and 31st at the MCMA Winter Workshop. That I'll, I'll be up there then, of January. And then I am up there uh, the 11th, 12th, and 13th of um, February with the MML Legislative Conference. And um, then, uh, I'm trying to think, like there was one in March, but uh, maybe not, uh, but there is a, um, I believe they're on break, uh, the legislative recess, the 22nd through the 28th, right. the 20th through 28th, so they're, so they're, they're not there then, so you don't want to sign up for that week, <coughs> and then, um, We put the council meetings on here as well, and then I, I believe I've got another, uh, in early April I have another meeting and I'll be there as well. I don't know if that's the first or second or the, or the next week. OMCA May annual conference is 6th and 7th of May. I will be, I will be there then as well, so I may go up the day before uh, on that. So those are the dates that I'll be there, and, and then uh, we will Note all those and note any of yours. I know uh, Brian was given Amanda some dates, so we'll, we'll get that filled in. But if you could just note times that uh, would be good for you to go, or if you're already going, and let Amanda know, then we'll we'll get the whole schedule out and uh, share with everybody. Okay. So, so that's council. If you would look at that and I think it's a possible date you might be able to be up there. Scott is already there. Uh, I ask, uh, I'm at the <laughs> week of the MML Legislative Conference. I asked Robbie if he might be able to go up there for that, and he thought he would, so that, that covers that time. Uh, I will be up there January 29th, the 28th and 29th. Mm -hmm. And so maybe some of that one get together there. Uh, so the important thing is that we know so that we can contact the legislator to make appointments and have them maybe make appointments for us with key people that we might need to talk to about certain legislation, whether it's Wayfair or Senate Bill 5 or anything else that's on the agenda. And if you have trouble navigating the calendar electronically, you need to just uh, get with Amanda and she'll Item for you. Um, the other uh, item that I have to get is at the table is, is a list of potential meetings for uh, doing TTF informational um, uh, presentations. Um, we don't have some of the dates on this, um, but if you know someone that's in uh, some of these clubs <coughs> and you think it'd be good for you to be there and and uh, share in that presentation. Again, just let uh, Amanda know, and we'll uh, we'll get those scheduled as well. Uh, there are some 
uh, you'll know where she says need new contact. If you happen to know somebody in that group and, and you can contact them and, uh, and let them get hold of Amanda, that helps us in getting into those meetings. A lot of times you need somebody that knows. So it's a pretty long list. And, uh, of course, we'll take care of the Citizens Advisory Boards and the employee meetings. Um, and then there's some meetings that are already set that uh, we'll be making sure that we cover. <coughs> so, those are the two pieces of items that I have for you. Okay. And I also will mention that uh, uh, we've got a glitch in our, you probably know we've got a glitch in our, in our server server. Mm -hmm. And uh, the email is man, if you will, you need to get a hold of Scott or Gail. Do Cape City Clerk at gmail.com. And I think that's all I have. Anybody, nothing else? Nope. Okay. And if that's the case, we'll go right into planning and zoning. Mr. Skinner. Good evening. You look dapper tonight with that bow tie. <laughs> you wear it tonight. Yeah. This is the dress code, as I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> On our January 8th meeting was a very short agenda for the Planning and Zoning Commission. There were three uh, items. They were all amendments or proposed amendments to record plats. Uh, the first one was the OTC, second subdivision record plat. It's on the Broadway and North Fountain, subdividing that into three lots. Uh, the second one was the Spears third subdivision plat. That's on Hopper and Hawthorne, subdividing that into two lots. And then the VA subdivision uh, record plat, subdividing that into two lots as well. That's on uh, Mount Auburn and Southern Expressway. There were no concerns with any of them. All uh, three will come before you with unanimous recommendations from the commission. Okay. Any questions of Bruce? Don't think so. Thank you, sir. sir. Appreciate it. Next item for discussion is the uh, capital improvement plan, the CIP for 2020-2025. And you have uh, that draft in your information. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is the... Don't send your mailbox. I can get you the call. You have before you the draft CIP for the next five-year plumbing period. That summarizes the main project types that are covered by the plan. Um, I just want to be able to make it clear, this is a plumbing instrument. It is a living document. It is a dynamic process. Therefore, some of the figures are slightly different from those that were printed in your pack. Um, its primary focus is to assist the city in determining its needs in terms of capital investment over the next five years. That gives you a sense of the various sources of revenue. We don't plan to do anything unless we have the money already identified to do it with. And uh, if I could just make mention of the capital improvement sales tax, which was renewed last August, is <coughs> a primary source of income, as is TTF, which is on your agenda later this evening. That gives you a summary of the program as it stands right now. We'll have an opportunity on the 17th of February to consider it further in your public hearing and then we'll meet uh, in March uh, when you can resolve to accept or amend the draft program. So it's about 104 million of investment over the next five years in the key infrastructure that helps run this city. That's just a nice little pie chart that Nicolette did for me, or was it Beth Sunday? Thank you very much, I know you ever did it. Gives a sense of the allocations between the various types of infrastructure that uh, the city operates. That's your next steps. Mr. Mayor, as I say, you will have the opportunity on the 17th of February, your public hearing, to consider it in more detail, and then on the 2nd of March, that's when you will buy it the charter have to adopt or amend the draft program. <coughs> Any questions? Yep. We will review that and uh, any questions right now. How many questions here? I mean, I'm happy to take any questions after we took okay. All right. Thank you. TTF six discussion. Mr. Molly? Uh, kind of give us the background 
Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I don't have a real big formal presentation or anything. I just wanted to give a brief overview of where we are in the TTF 6 process at this point. Uh, you'll recall in October we had a presentation on the committee's work. Carrie Redeker presented to you on the process uh, with the committee beginning meeting last June. Um, some of the um, projects and uh, discussion they had over the course of several months, um, the outcome of the public meetings that were held, as well as the online survey. And during that presentation, Mr. Rediger presented two options to the council for your consideration, an option A and an option B. And I put on the days for you a spreadsheet that lists the projects. Um, you'll see that in option A and option B we have several projects that are consistent in both of those options. And really, the, the outstanding question that needs to be answered this evening is what the final TTF6 project list is going to look like, um, whether that's option A, option B, or some combination thereof. And the main distinction between those two options is option A calls for a South Sprague Street project from Highway 74 north to William. Um, and that would involve um, some sort of pavement improvement as well as sidewalk, streetscape, lighting, um, that nature. And then option B would include um, instead a BMD um, Phase 6 project, Veterans Memorial Drive Phase 6 project, uh, 2.3 million, which would include design, acquisition, and grading. Um, so those are the, the two things that are really, I think, are the outstanding uh, discussion items. Um, we are happy to answer any questions that you may have on those two projects or any of the other projects. Um, we have Andrew Stone here from Public Works um, who uh, has a lot of the information um, as well. So if you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer that. And uh, we are beginning presentations, um, our public campaign in the next two weeks. So it is ideal if we have a project list so we can start um, educating the public on what TTF 6 will go to fund. Are we anticipating a, a vote uh, right now, or is this... Is if this we can idea? come to some consensus to have to do that this evening, we'll do that. But what we what we know uh, uh, we'll do it in the past year, in the previous year, what we've done is uh, an indication from council of what projects they want included in the thing. And that can be, it can be a, a motion, and of course you cannot do a motion or anything during during study session, you'd have to do that during, or just merely instructing the city manager to proceed with option A would be, would be fine. We've done it, we've done it, that's what we've done. Yes, in, in the past we typically have a consensus on the project list by the time that we call oh, the election yeah. sure. and so it's done by motion. This case is a little different um, where we had this outstanding issue to resolve but if you, I think, direct um, Mr. Meyer and staff, we can proceed with whichever option um, the council desires. I have a question regarding the, uh, the design only <coughs> option the, the Correct. for better <coughs> Option A, two hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Um, if if we just did that now and did not include further work um, in this in TTF six, um, would that design work still be relevant for TTF seven or? Yes. You know, uh, I mean, I, yes. The the design would not um, deviate over time. The time would not impact. That. Whenever we're, and I've gotten the impression that, well, obviously the reason why we're having part of this discussion is to, to BMD or to not BMD. That is the question. Um, I've made it very clear. I think most of you know my stance where I'm at on this, and that is for BMD. Um, this is a project that we've been working on for, for 25 plus years. When I was at Simpo, uh, Larry Payne, who is part of the um, um, special special road district, whenever they gave um, a resolution in support of applying for the grants, he said, you know, this is something that we've been talking about and working for, working on for 
the last 40 years. So whenever I look at where we're at currently, and, and I look at it and say, you know, this is something that we've put a lot of time and resources in, and to, and to only do $200,000 for a project that we've had on our, in our vision for so long, to me, um, it disappoints me. It disappoints me that we would hit pause um, for five years. And we've got a lot of time and resources. I, I, when I got on council the first time, we were talking. I mean, we were still going through uh, the pains of some of the Veterans Memorial uh, pieces and getting those put to bed. And, 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 uh, and so, you know, I, I get it. It's a hard decision. I, I, you know, I wish we wouldn't have, it's kind of unprecedented that it's gotten to this point. It wasn't just there, the TTF group, here you go, here's what you were, you were given, and then we go on about our merry way. No, we have actually two options, and, and we have to make that decision ourselves. Um, but with that, I would, rec I would also say that this is the, with VMD in there, we are still taking an unpre unprecedented stance on the amount of dollars going into repairs out of the TTF. Unprecedented. Uh, over 88% will go into repairs, as opposed to, in the past, not even being near that. Um, so I still feel good about us, how us being able to go to our, our constituents and say, you know, we did listen to you, and, and we did tweak VMD drastically, but we are putting in a piece that does look to um, put some closure to a project and, and something that is, it's a vision, it's part of our vision, and I would hate for us to abandon it. I still think with VMD in here, we have a great story to tell on why to vote yes for this tax. And, you know, when I'm getting calls from um, Kevin Stanfield, who is developing a piece on Veterans Memorial at 61. When I'm getting calls from Patrick Dur Dury, who is <coughs> doing uh, the construction for for um, <coughs> the new Deerfield, you know, these are strategic partners that have heard us say, "Hey, we, we, this is a project, and they have they have invested money, they've invested time." So for us to say no to all of them, I feel like we've kind of bait and switched them. I mean, we've got some partners that have invested a lot of money, strategic partners out there that have <coughs> decided to do planned developments across the highway and, and are best investing money along the northern section of EMD. So that's, that's where I'm at. I, I did have one question for Molly, and that was, on contingency and um, how much contingency has, has been used out of TTF-5 and from a number standpoint are we always using up the contingency? I'm sure we are. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> and unfortunately TTF-5 doesn't look much different than in the past. We've had some overruns on several projects. We've had a few projects come in over budget. Um, the uh, Independence project, which we have a public meeting on next week, um, we've been trying to rein that in um, and get that within the, the estimate that we had when we went to the voters, although we did have some <coughs> overruns there. Um, uh, we're still in design on some of the other projects, but um, I do believe we have some concerns that, for example, the um, the Main Street and Roberts project that we may not have enough um, estimated. So, that's yes, where you're I using some of the, I, I figured we run into issues on every TTF with, with. And that's why we build the contingency in yeah. for that purpose. Now, it was, it was, a, it was outside chance, right? <laughs> Worth asking the question. It was. I just want to toss it out there, you know, whenever I've been looking at all these different projects, thinking about it, what I've been doing is just sort of thinking about cars per day impacted. And, and, and you know, right now, I know that there's not a road where BMD is, and it's hard to, to kind of look at that, look at that. But I do know that South Sprague and Sprague in general gets a lot of vehicular traffic. 
and a lot of, you know, that, that is a huge impact, and it's an existing road, uh, I, you know, and, and we're not adding a more road with that project. Uh, it's not adding to what the city has to take care of. It's not adding to those additional costs continuing. And so that's why I just keep thinking back on this spring, this spring project, and I just keep thinking, oh, you know, that just, that seems like such a, it, it's, it's what we hear every day. It's those phone calls we get about, you know, streetscape and, and roads and lighting and everything. And that's why I keep coming back to the spring project, because it just seems like instead of us continuing to add additional maintenance for our city staff, you know, doubling down and, and just taking care of what it is that we already have existing. I will say this. You look back at the history of TTF from its conception when it started. Uh, it was started to develop new arterial systems and to uh, enhance transportation around Cape by building something new to enhance economic development and to give better pathways around the city and through the city. As you look back through the history of what, what the TT, various TTFs have done, uh, originally the, con the concept was there to build new road. And it's kind of morphed itself with each TTF in that each time, because of the condition of our city streets, we've added more maintenance and more maintenance and we've, and we've done more reconstruction of current city streets that are already there. Uh, in my mind, it's kind of sad that you look at a street like Lexington, who's not that old, and it was just falling apart, and we have to do something to it. Uh, you know, there are other streets, Sprig has been there a lot longer than Lexington has, and Lexington is in worse shape than Sprig is. Uh, <clears throat> that, you know, they don't build things now like they used to. Uh, I don't know what that is but it just doesn't happen. And I know we went through a period where we didn't have the base underneath some of those streets that we should have had. But as I look back at the history, and I look at what uh, the city leaders at that time proposed, and I look at what, what the artery can mean if Veterans Memorial Drive is connected eventually from all the way to LaSalle, all the way down to William, uh, it will have a lot of traffic. Right now, you know, it goes from from uh, Highway 61 to Hopper Road, and there's not that many people who use it. But if it's connected, if you've got a, an avenue where the thousands of people that go to the Sportsplex don't have to get on 55 and they can go straight down there and get to hotels and get to restaurants, then it will be used. And it'll get another avenue for the people who live in Twin Lakes in the western part of the city to go south without having to come all the way around to get on 55. Uh, so it's 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 kind of like you know you build it and they will come. But I don't go by traffic counts. Well, when you're building a subdivision, you don't build the houses first and then the streets. Right. You know. I mean, I I, I understand. And I, and you know, for that reason. You know, originally, I think the, the original, when they look at TTFs, they, they projected this out for a number of years, and they thought, well, if we do this section of Veterans Memorial Drive and this TTF, and we do this section and this TTF, and this section and this TTF, slowly, over a period of about 15 or 20 years, we'll get it done. If something's not done with, in TTF 6, it's going to put it back almost 10 years. Because you have to pay for things as you go. You can't, you know, our TTF, we're just now finishing all of TTF 4. TTF 5 projects won't be done for another three years. TTF 6 projects won't start until we've been collecting the tax money to do those after TTF 5 projects are completed. So it just goes all that much longer that, that something's not done. And that road to nowhere that people says exists now will exist for years to come. Well, and it's no different than, I mean, and we're talking about traffic counts. I mean, look at the wear and tear that Mount Auburn gets. Because at one point in time, that was the furthest 
It is. West and Peaks. now Auburn is in places where it's falling. Well, and, and, and so you talk about VMD being a portion that helps to alleviate some of that off of Mount Auburn. It will. You know. Um, but does this, does this even, this doesn't actually fully do VMD. It, it's just grading work. No. And Design, acquisition, and grading is what's included. That's, in it, that's another key point. We missed out on the governor's opportunity grants this time to do VMD South. But the governor's going to do the opportunity grants again next year. And he may continue to do them every year at $50 million a year because each one of those things that the state contributes $50 million for stimulates $150 or $200 million worth of work because they're matching. Uh, some of them are 25% matches, some of them are 50% matches, some of them have been 100%, but not many. And that being the case, if we have a portion of this done already, it would give us an excellent chance to get a grant, to get it completed, and get it completed earlier and make it a more functional street, a more functional artery, relieve that traffic off of Mount Auburn, <coughs> give I-55 that emergency area that they may need in case it's stopped up. So by not doing this, I'm more worried about maybe missing out on the, one of those grants and the chance to finish it. Doing $200,000 for it won't do anything because you're not going to get a grant for the whole thing. And the, and the 2.3, correct me if I'm wrong, Molly, that was essentially so that if we could get a TTF-7 passed, that within that first 18 months, pouring that would be, that was the idea with the two, right? That's correct. That we would wait, if, if option B were selected and we did the design, acquisition, and grading, we would wait to do the grading until the, towards the end of the TTF-6 cycle so that it would be keyed up and ready to go for a TTF-7 construction of the roadway. That was the committee's okay. idea. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The, well, other, it, the other option is that if if uh, we do choose option B and, and do a portion of TTF, uh, I still think within that $13 million for repairs over that next five years, that a portion of that could be done to do an overlay on Sprig and do those and do some of those things that that may need to be done because of the traffic. Well, the same perhaps can be said though about about the the BMD project. Um, you know, if we if we find two hundred thousand um, dollars, or excuse me, um, we, we could we could start we could start doing those things um, that Molly just mentioned. Uh, if there is extra money. I, I'm at this not point. Of, there's not a lot of 2.3 million dollars in extra money sitting around. Well, but there's but there's several. We we're talking about several phases of, of projects that need to happen before we start pouring concrete to make a road. Um, at this point, I'm I'm uh, casting my vote for option A um, because. Um, I, The, you all talked about the, um, you know, the road from the sportplex. I think an obvious issue with with um, explaining a need for for VMD going straight to that sportplex is that um, we we currently have I fifty five and Mount Auburn already that pretty much goes straight to the sportplex. Um, uh, it's Auburn's it's kind of a roundabout way to get there. Well, it's. It's a minute down the road. It's hard to argue that we need a third, third road um, to, to a facility, at least in my mind, especially with that 55. Um, I, I, Robbie, I guess I, get, I disagree with you a bit. I don't believe that we're saying no uh, to VMD if we, if we don't include it in TTF 6 right now, especially if we include the, the design work in there. It, it, it's... I think it's still moving the ball um, much more, much in a much smaller way, obviously. Um, I haven't heard a really excellent rationale um, for why BMD is needed right now. Um, 
you all sound like you're aware of, of developers and projects that could, could happen. Obviously, cities have frontage roads, you know, everywhere. Um, we, we see those um, most of the time when you're driving, driving down the interstate. But, um, so it's, 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 on one hand, that's obvious. But um, I suppose I, I wish I were more aware of actual plans, actual, with, with actual timelines. Um, and perhaps even the, the governor's grant might have a better chance of uh, happening if if those things were in place. I don't I don't know if that's typically how developers work with the city or um, you know. But I, I'm not getting those phone calls that, and, and I'm not aware of, of who wants to do what and who needs the and uh, you know. So so maybe I'm I'm just ignorant. Well, but, but I think our community is that as whole is also. I mean, we've got three, you have uh, a project on Hopper Road right now, you have Deerfield across the street, you have across uh, the Mid-America <coughs> across 55. In Jackson? No, City of Cape Girardeau. Okay. We annexed it in as a planned development. The, the new Deerfield. The Deerfield Lodge. Yeah. Across. Um, it is there's across there's the a, interstate, across but that is a... But that's, you're talking about across the street, across the interstate. Well, I understand, but there's part of that. So when you say there's no development or not anything going on, it's pretty apparent. I'm there, talking about like where on the other side. The whole on the other side. How would how would Veterans Memorial Drive be pertinent? There's 55 acres right now that is a plan to be developed right there. I don't understand. We, we signed off on it. On that's Hopper and Old Hopper. Remember when we had that? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So this would so right. the, the BMD would go along the backside of that property. Right. So, we, so it'd be right. It goes property. up to there so now. I'm, I guess I'm confused that there's no development, but they can just name two that are going on right there. Well, the, Veterans area. Memorial Drive hits that property right now. The corner of it, basically. Yeah, but you can't develop south with no road there. Again, I, I just haven't heard the <coughs> rationale as to why we don't <coughs> develop south right now in the next five years. Here's the way I look at it. But, and this is no indication of which way I go on it, but the traffic counts are not an issue. Nobody used I-55 until the interstate system was built, so they're not, you can't really use that because it's not built yet. I look at it as when I'm in con considering it. If you look in city limits of Cape, the most prominently located undeveloped land is right there. And so if you look at an investment of tax dollars to get a return on that tax dollar to potentially generate new tax dollars through development, whether it be commercially or residentially with new housing, new residents, um, or more appealing housing and more residents, or uh, new commercial developments right there with interstate frontage, that is a wise investment of our tax dollars right along that stretch to develop that to help generate new revenue that otherwise wouldn't be there. With that being said, there's a case that we made that, you know, beautifying Sprig um, would help attract commercial developments down there that wouldn't already be there. I struggled with, with the Sprig because I, I drive that, and that driving surface isn't necessarily as, or any worse than a lot of roads that we need to repair. And so, if we, I would say, if we as a council choose to do the BMD route, that if there's any budgeted acquisition costs that we realize less of, a, of a, an amount than what is budgeted, I think any of that savings, I really get frustrated that it's an all or nothing, and I'd like to see some steps taken forward with the Sprig also. And so if there's any savings realized through land deals or donated land, whatever it might be, that it's used towards low cost, high impact, renovations that move spring forward as well, whether that's um, more street lighting, LED lighting, curb, streetscapes, whatever it might be, as well as through the maintenance and repair because it's easier to justify because it is a reconstruction and repair, but throw that into the 13 million that's already allocated for reconstruction and repair towards that. But I would like to see a dedicated effort towards, if we go the BMD route, to also helping the spring project move forward as well. But couldn't you flip that <coughs> and say, well, if we do the spring route, we can do the same 
I think we could have a bigger impact at this stage of where VMD is from a construction standpoint. Um, we would have a bigger impact by doing some of the things to Sprig moving it forward than moving because it's such a, it's, it's a much larger price tag on the the VMD to get it moving forward to a route to a path to where it would actually be able to because I think the TTF committee really peeled off the lowest hanging fruit item which is the design and that's two point or two two hundred thousand but then once you start adding the rest it starts adding a zero to the back of those numbers which make it harder to come up with those money whereas opposed to when you're talking to adding more street or adding more street lights yeah. sidewalks curves handicap accessible curve cutouts whatever it might be that's a little bit more easier to swallow and find as we go in the repair plan. If I could just, I'm so sorry, look, if I could just finish, wrap up my, my question. I, if I can just hear some rationale for the, why doing it now, the VMD portion, uh, the south, before, moving south. Before we get into that, uh, because I know there's some people here that, that were concerned I wanted to be here for that discussion and maybe make some comments uh, before that happened. Show do you have anything? Well, I want to say uh, how many times in War II have Sprig Street been fixed? And I haven't got an answer yet. That's how long it's been. So we always pushing back that would be considered not completely necessary so that we can stroke somebody else to feel like it is necessary. And I think that it's time for a, a, a balance to be done in the city. I don't think it should be because, you know, it's there and uh, we want it to be like this and then, bam, so we're going to sacrifice this over here so that can happen. I don't see it like that. I feel like that it should be fair in this city that if the street sidewalk and you know without a shadow of doubt the sewers and things are broken and, and no one comes to run when the rain comes and goes into the citizen's home. No one come and clean out the drain so they have to wait until the water goes down. But yet, we feel like we should put them, take Sprig and set it to the side for the moment or south side of war too. And then let's do this because this is more important. And we've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And no one has given me a date yet, a time from when the last time repairs was done for the streets in the city of Cape, over into War Two on Spring Street. And we ain't talking about the other ones. So I feel like this should be a fair thing. Shelly, and I, I kind of, I see what you're saying, but the portion that we're talking about. I mean, there's still $2.9 million that we that is for Sprig. Southern, on Sprig yeah. Street from Southern Express. We're not even talking about church. And that, the part that we're talking about is from 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 William Street to Shawnee. I mean, But so you're not talking about sacrifice part of a part of Sprig. You just want you just want to use that and we'll make sure we got enough money to take care of Sprig Street. And the south side, or that's what you try well, to say. If I wanted to say that, I would say, no, let's just scrap all of Sprig together. I'm not saying that. No, you're not saying it, but it end up being another way. Because most of the time we'll say things and then it never come to fruition. Never. Never. Shelly, we have done no, a no, lot. No, no, no. We have done a lot in, in, over the course of the last four years that you and I have worked together. I'm not right. throwing yeah, that all out. I'm just saying that it. We, we have a project that we're, that we're looking for a part of a vision, and we've had a vision going back 40 years. I'm not asking to go all new on this. I'm just asking for us still to keep our vision on what we started and, and enhance economic development on that side. I, I love just, Nate's idea, but we're not scrapping the whole thing. There's $3 million that's going into spring. How much is going into the other one? 2.3. I mean, you're, there's still a ton of money going into spring. A ton of money. There's still a lot of things you can do to spray just out of the airbag. Yeah. Still do both. So I mean, I didn't. I just don't want to sacrifice it. I would like, I just don't want to see it happening so often, and then everybody feel like it's okay. <coughs> it's the same thing if somebody came and broke your porch, and every time someone come and ask you, you tell them about your porch being broken and give you an answer, but they never give you a a a healing of that. 
situation. Well, it, and you and if you don't live in, in the war, then you you have to forget about it. And I'm sorry to say that, but it's time. We're at a place now that we just overlook, overlook, overlook all the time. And because I don't say too much, don't mean that I don't hurt. Shelly, you know, I get exactly what you're saying. There's nobody that has supported I understand. your war. I, look, we're talking about me. I know, I understand. You know I support that war. I am just, I'm, there's a little sliver, okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. that I'm saying let's do over here. Because well, I'm just saying, let's be fair. That's all there's I'm nobody that gets your excitement here, that gets where you're talking about, the more than me. Okay. I believe. Okay. Well, I just wanted it to be fair. You know, I don't, let's not be, let's not let the scale be. Agreed. Um, and I'm not I mean, saying that whatsoever. I think the problem, at least for me, I don't want to put, try to put words in Shelly and mm -hmm. Dan's mouth, but. Um, this, this section of Sprig Street it is heavily used, it's heavily walked. There's pedestrians everywhere, all day, every day, there. Um, the, the things that we're talking about doing in that project are, are you know, sidewalks and um, street lighting, uh, some safety issues that will be used every day. Um, so it's, it's harder to, again, I, I guess I keep going back to this question. Why, how do we rationalize uh, taking that money and using it for a, a brand new road where there is nothing but pasture right now? So, so tell me the, uh, tell me the urgency. Why, why do we have to do it now instead of perhaps TTF7? Does anybody here this evening want to make any comments about this project? Street today, but I think the, I've got to go back to something that my father taught me, and that is there are people who make things happen, there are people who watch things happen, and then there are people who wonder what the hell just did happen. Okay? Our town is growing. Okay? We got some tough years in front of us, especially with the fact of 61 with, with Double Diamond Interchange. I don't know if you're all familiar with this or not, but uh, Mr. Cole has a number, uh, quite a bit of property out that way on the uh, southwest side of the interstate uh, <coughs> and uh, my cousin's development. And the access to that is going to be severely hampered with the double diamond. The we can drive is being abandoned as we all know it today. Are you all familiar with what I'm talking about? As soon as you go on to the other side of the interstate, you can make a left to go down uh, back there to New Way and so forth. That's being abandoned, so they're going to have to go further down to the stoplight. Um, a field turns into homes. A field turns into businesses. Um, the city, if you want to get down to it, the city has quite an investment already, which I have this is a different company than mine. Uh, the Zaduri Plaza with the convention center. And uh, the traffic on Mount Auburn, as I said, uh, somebody, Bob, I think you said, um, excuse me, Mayor Fox, uh, uh, said that um, Mount Auburn is starting to break up, and it is. Um, Lexington is a shame. And if there's anything that comes out of this whole thing, I hope, I hope that you all get down and put in stricter uh, uh, ordinances or whatever it takes, building codes to bet, better build these streets. Because like I said, Lexington's falling apart. Six Sprig, it's not that bad. I mean, there are places, uh, granted, it's more, they're, they're, they're pretty bad, you know, but they can be fixed. If we stop the development, if we stop building roads, we're in trouble, okay? Um, I believe so much in BMD that my family, our company, our, my work company, family, 
invested a million five on that section out there on the northwest side, on the northeast side, excuse me, for the sports complex. And we also donated the ground to that. We also felt that it was so important that we get the visual um, impact that we, as our company, went in and removed a bunch of dirt to give a better line of sight to the sports complex. We've made an investment. I'm asking you all to make an investment so that we have the opportunity, like when Mayor Fox says, when a grant comes down, we've already started things to where they're looking at us and saying they're progressive. Not saying we don't need to fix everything else. You're right. People respond all the way across. We have to take care of everybody. But we can't stop development. Once we stop, it's so much harder to get started again. And it'll probably, well, it'll be TTF-7, maybe it'll be TTF-8. If you look at the traffic on County Road 620 coming down, it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse, or as my dad would say, it's worse than it used to be. Okay? But it's not going to get any gooder either. All right? So, we have to look at alternative routes. When VMD gets completed, north and south, look at the tributary we'll have and look at the safety we'll have. If nothing else, please do not let anybody build a house on there that dumps out onto Veterans Memorial Drive like we had on, on Mount Auburn Road. How crazy, how unsafe. Those people got to back out and take a chance at it and then stab it and get out of it. So I'm asking you to look at things from a, 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 a big complex of what all it is. And just because it's on the other side of the interstate doesn't mean it's Jackson's. Okay? It's cake. And if you really want to get down to it, you know the little, where the little red barn is? Where you go Jackson, cake, Jackson. Then go back to cake. And there's an area about not that long. That's cake, right? So we've got to look at this thing together. And, and with the, the transportation and the growth and, you know, look who is the uh, economic generator. And I'm not knocking Jackson at all because they've come a long way and doing a lot of things. But people come to Cape Girardeau, okay? And when you see these medical facilities keep going and going and going, we have got to figure out a way to move traffic. And you're not going to do any more on Mount Auburn Road because it goes to Lexington. And then we have a mess out there. So that's just my two cents worth. And I, I hope I've made some headway here. So thank you. Anybody else? Good evening, Mayor Fox, uh, council members. I'm Kevin Whitfield. I represent Drury Southwest, the other Drury's. And uh, we own the Drury Plaza Hotel. Uh, we've been community partners in the city of Cape Girardeau for over 40 years. Uh, Veterans Memorial Drive is important to us as well. But one of the things that I wanted to address was some of the concerns that I heard earlier about why build a street or an arterial road in you know, a, a field. Development happens over time. Uh, it takes a long time. The acquisition and the, the expenditure that you're talking about this evening talks about design, acquisition, and grading. Those three aspects alone are going to take several years to get done. So it's important that you remember from a developer's perspective, the infrastructure goes in first, and then the development follows second. As we develop, as we develop things like the Drury Plaza and many other cities, the things that developers look for and homeowners and business owners look for, it's a consistent list of things. They look for connectivity. They look for emergency response access. They look for multiple traffic routes. And that's an important feature with what you're talking about today when you're repairing certain roads like Mount Auburn, Lexington. At some point in time, those 
those people are wanting different routes to get to where they need to go, whether it be to the hospitals or to the retail centers or wherever. Veterans Memorial Drive is going to be an important part of that. Um, guests to our town look for the same things that we do, day in and day out. They look for easy access. They're in a strange town. They're staying at a hotel. They're going to the sports place. They're going to St. Francis Hospital, Southeast. So ease of access is critically important to them. And Veterans Memorial Drive is going to speed up and accelerate development in that area. Right now it is fields, but it's along the interstate. It's in between Highway 61 and Route K. That area is going to develop. And so by taking the steps to do that early and get that going, Cape Girardeau is going to continue to grow and it's going to have something to give to the folks that want to move here. And that's the other side of it. Cape is a growing community. You've got professional people, you've got service people, all types of folks are moving to Cape and they need a good place to live and they need good traffic patterns and they need ease of access. So it's an important part of what you do. You've got a very important job. There's a lot of projects here. But this is a vital one. And so from a developer's perspective, we follow with those types of developments that your community needs. And so it's important to us. So with that, I ask for your support. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm going to add my two cents. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody. Somebody who can save anybody. Um, so just from the points that I've heard of this conversation, I, of course, I don't even really know exactly what all y'all are talking about. But a um, couple of things I wrote down is no one stopping development. I like you. You guys are kind of proving the whole point that, you know, Cape is that growing city. It's going to continue to grow. Nothing that's decided either way on this particular issue is not going to stop Kate from growing. Um, I'm definitely kind of worried about the answer to Stacy's question, like why is the priority more towards the MD? <laughs> um, and when you talk about the urgency, you think about the safety of the people that are already here in the city, not the ones that are coming. If safety and less lighting is an issue for the South Side, uh, it would seem like we would want to put our money or whatever towards that safety and development of the people who are already here and Cape's still going to continue to grow so not really sure I mean I'm glad to hear there's already some money uh, developed for the south side can't wait to see that being used uh, <laughs> and hopefully it's not just a back burner that uh, people end up forgetting about and because like Shelly said, um, the South Side Cape, uh, you may all not have been always council members, but I do feel like that part of town has always uh, been neglected by our city officials, and that's proof because if you go there tonight, you would probably almost run into a car if it's parked on the side of the street because it's so dark. But so I think the my main concern would be the priority why is the urgency to, to some thought to something or people who are not even there we're talking about people who are going to be coming to the area which regardless of the fact you know that eventually they are um, but there's already people who exist and are living in not so safe areas and i just feel like that should be the main priority we should focus on them first that's all i have to say today thank you everyone I'm Robin Cole, and um, I uh, have uh, a lot of uh, cause of concern uh, in our community. I've worked with some of you on various things. Others of you uh, might not know me, so let me touch on a couple of things that seem important to me. If we looked at uh, any pair of cities in the United States, 
I'm thinking St. Louis and Memphis at the moment, but you pick any pair of cities in the United States, <coughs> and you find a place between those cities where the greatest population resides between the city pairs. And you find the principal intersection at that location, between those city pairs, at that population center, and then you look at how well developed it is, you will find not one single comparable intersection to center junction. It is the only undeveloped intersection between major cities at the population center at the principal intersection in the United States. That suggests to me there is some deficiency. Now, I came to school here in 1961. I came up 61 Highway, and I came by the KFVS fake tower right there across from the Conservation Center. It was sitting there then, it's sitting there today. And I came up that road, and altogether, it's pretty close to the same that it was then. I don't know how much longer you want to wait before you gather together a vision of how you're going to find the centers of development for the Cape Girardeau, Jackson, Metropolitan Center. I don't know where the other centers are now. I, I'm following people who are 20 times as smart as I am, and I may be <laughs> defaming them by making that comparison. I care about Lexington Avenue. It goes across the south border of 48 acres at Perryville Road and Lexington that is owned by my family. I watch the way the city designed the drainage that goes from Perryville Road across the end of Lexington, and you maybe have never been there in a rainstorm. But if a drop of water falls at Greenbrier and Perryville, where does it go when it enters the Star and Drain system? It comes all the way down to Lexington, makes a right turn, and goes all the way <coughs> to the bottom of the hill at Randall, filling up the streets, coming over the curbs, creating havoc, and oh gosh, I wonder why Lexington has a durability problem when it's constantly year-round flooded with all that water because drainage when the street was designed and I remember when the pavement stopped at 2105 and it was gravel north of there. I don't look old enough to be able to remember that but I do. So that whole process sets back and deteriorates for decades. Your whole city is set back because you aren't putting in place what you need to put in place to cause Center Junction to economically thrive. Now, I don't know how much money you have to invest. Ms. Moore makes very strong and good points. One of the few people who has developed and built houses in that part of the city. Some of my past unindicted co-conspirators who were involved in building brand new houses for Habitat for Humanity. So I've helped develop new housing in that part of Cape Girardeau. At the same time, I don't know how much expectation you have for economic development to occur from Highway 74 to, Main, to, to Broadway by investing money in Sprig Street. I just don't know what the future, my crystal ball looking that far forward is black. I do think that along the interstate making Veterans Memorial Drive commercial, visible on both sides, 
visible from the interstate. I have no dog in the fight on Veterans Memorial Drive. I don't own a square inch. Making that commercial so that the traffic and the people who are on Interstate 55 see those businesses that can be located on either side of Veterans Memorial Drive, north and south of Kings Highway, has economic potential for these smart people to be able to make economic growth occur. You've got to look forward 30, 40, 50 years and ask yourself, where are these communities going to grow? Where is investment going to be made? As the gentleman said, it will be on land that's currently not built on. You're asked as city leaders to use foresight. It's common sense, always in short supply. I don't know how to tell you how to make these decisions and won't try. But you've got to look where is it possible to have economic growth and invest tax money in that development, not where it's never going to occur. And I'm grateful for the effort that all of you make and our city leaders and our brand new airport manager in whom I have great hope and expectations. <laughs> you had to get a plug for the airport, then you're up. <laughs> um, so that being said, you know, what I want to talk to the council about now is does option A present us with a consensus? 2.9 million for Sprague and 2.3 million for BMD. Or did, you know, sorry, sorry. This. sorry, just does yeah. option option A on, on this public forum results that we've come up with, it would give us 2.9 do the two million nine hundred fifty nine hundred fifty thousand for uh, Sprague from Southern Expressway to Shawnee Park uh, or Shawnee Park, <coughs> and then if we choose option A, that also would give us 2.3 million for BMD. Option no. B. Or option B. B. Sorry. Option B gives you 2.95 for the residential portion of. Am yeah. I reading that right? Yeah. So option. B. Is that right? Option B. Option B. Both options okay. have 2.9 million in That's it what it is. for right. Sprig. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. Both options. So right. almost three million bucks for Sprig in both. In no matter what, we're really that's not even that's so not three million dollars for Sprig is on the table. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's, 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 this yeah. Yeah. it's it's this portion. It's this portion right here, which is from seventy four up to what? Here's yeah. your here's your, your big <coughs> your big difference, Dan. Mm -hmm. If you choose option A, and you spend another two point one million dollars on Sprig, and you spend two hundred thousand dollars on B and D, two hundred thousand dollars is a pittance, and it. it's really going to make it hard. To apply for a grant when all you spent is two hundred thousand dollars of well, four and a half million mm -hmm. to do a project. Yeah. If you choose option B and you do the engineering and the land acquisition for B and D, you can still use part of your repair money to do part of the two point one million. If you choose the two point one million, you can't use repair money to do part of B and D. Yeah. And Mayor Vidal. And I, where are you getting that? I'm sorry, Bob. Where are you getting that? Please? I said if you choose option A, oh. option B. If you, if you choose option A, and you do all of Sprig, oh. okay. to, to William. To William. Mm -hmm. You're only spending $200,000 just in engineering on B and B. That would effectively rule out any opportunity to apply for the governor's grant because you're not going to get 100% of the project. Mm -hmm. If you choose option B, <coughs> it would enable you to at least do part of the land acquisition and do more of and d and make it a much more presentable project to apply for an opportunity grant later. Because they're going to be there. Do we know why they... And you can still use part of your repair money to do part of that $2.1 on Spurs. That's what I'm asking. Where, how, how's that? 
Well, because you got $13 million sitting there that's not designated for any particular project. It's just repair. It wouldn't it maintenance. Wouldn't. It's designated it throughout. I mean, if you, if you, I think that would need to be part of the construction is if you're going to reduce the amount of, uh, because that would not be spent on taking care of it. That would be an improvement project. It would be an improvement right. project. The, the, current, the, the money that we have allocated for maintenance goes to our asphalt overlays and our concrete repair program, and we have those repairs identified over right. the course of TTF6. So if you wanted to take a portion of the maintenance money, to make improvements on spray, we would have to reduce the amount of asphalt but, and concrete repair that we've identified. Well, right, but we don't know also what part of maintenance, I mean, if there were no TTF, obviously there's going to be some maintenance done on that portion of spring over the next five years, I would assume. If there's such mm -hmm. a need. Identify if there's point. such a need, then well, obviously without TTF, there is the project <coughs> is is only surface because of all the other things we're doing. So there are all of the sidewalks and other readjustments. Then you have to adjust the surface to hit those those sidewalks and the ADA compliance and all of that. So that's the main reason. You, you all grow it, and I hear that a lot. There's really the surface isn't that bad. It isn't. If we if we don't do those other things, then yeah, we might do some pothole repair. But we, I, I don't know. In the next five years, we would end up doing any just surface repair. Does, does any of the usual repair, and I know, sorry, and I know through the tracking mechanism, you guys have mapped out what you know sequence <coughs> of the repairs and the and the overlays. Does any of that repair, that 13 million, go towards street lights, and lighting? Go ahead, the street lights down there meet our standard. Uh, last year, possibly two years ago, we converted all of our street lights south of 74 to a higher wattage LED, so that did provide more light. Uh, we are working with Ameren currently to upgrade many more lights in the city to LED, not only to provide better lighting, but to reduce our operational cost of our lighting, because that is a concern. Um, in conversations with them, we are starting on the southern end where we left off near 74, working our way north as they can do that. Uh, they are regulated by a public service commission, so they can only convert so many lights a year due to their uh, contracts and stuff of that nature. But they are working from 74 North now, since 74 South is converted. Did I answer that completely? I'm sorry. Yeah, so it sounds like that the next phase would be almost this stretch just north of 74, 74 of spring. No. Yeah. Potentially. The million does not include the current lighting. What that was was about nine, nine and a half million was identified of current needs throughout the city for concrete streets. Seventy percent roughly of our streets are concrete, um, which left the other three and a half, four and a half million as a maintenance for asphalt that hasn't been identified yet, but is an ongoing issue because everything begins to go downhill with time, so because we fixed it here doesn't mean it goes downhill. Uh, so many of those locations are already identified or already needed for repairs. So simply saying, let's take two and a half million from here and use it here. On paper, that makes sense, but then there's two and a half million dollars worth of work that's already identified that will continue to grow work <coughs> over time. And we don't have an operational budget large enough to say, let's throw two million dollars at this to fix this problem. And that we was, just don't have that. That, really, that was the problem. That, that was what TTF committee looked at first, was coming up with the number they felt like was appropriate to, to do the maintenance work. I don't know, John, that that's, that's correct. I think that's part of it. Hi, good evening. John Boss, 834 Alta Vista, former uh, council member and also a member of TTF 5 and 6 committees. So when we first kicked off the TTF 6 program um, this last year, uh, we were basically told, here's about how much money we think we ought to set aside for maintenance and the remainders for projects. So I mean, that was what we wrestled with first, and that was kind of a... Right. 
it came kind of untouchable. It, it, you know, it, it was a starting point, and yeah. we certainly had a similar deliberation around what projects should be included and not included. Um, I will tell you, I think uh, Andrew just made the point that the roads that we choose not to fix in the next five years are not going to get better on their own. And so we're going to continue to have to, to deal with this issue uh, in future council sessions. I guess that's the elephant in the room is we're really talking about how the TTF program has uh, moved away from its original vision of new developments to spur economic development. And it's been very easy, and I probably am guilty of this, to use some of that money for maintenance. The elephant in the room is how do we maintain the streets that we have? We don't have a funding solution for that. So, so after the voters weigh in on whatever list of projects gets determined for TTF 6, I think it's imperative that this council continue to debate how are we going to maintain the roads that we have. Well, one plus is that with our vote on capital improvements, last of capital improvements tax in the middle of last year, correct? It's going to give us. It'll give us more ammunition. More that, ammunition. That as you all know, it's not enough. Well, I know it's not and, enough. and so therein lies the challenge: is as we continue to grow the network and develop uh, properties to have our population grow. It just continues to add to the burden of how are we going to maintain what we have. Well, every city has the same problem. Mm -hmm. It's not just future of us. It's not. It's not. You're, you're right. We face this uh, time that I was on council. So look at our federal government. <laughs> we should get some good people to go to Jefferson City. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great idea, John. <laughs> Well, thanks for what you guys do for our community. Thank you, John. So just kind of reviewing all this, I'm looking at trying, trying to do what the federal government can't do and bring everybody together. <laughs> um, and so let, let's, let's, kind of, let's, let's look at this in numbers. Let's look at this in project. Option B on this list that we have in front of us, which is completely hypothetical to everybody in the audience, uh, option B gives $2.95 million to Sprint. South Spring. South Spring. Uh, they both did. They both did. They both. Yeah. But on the adverse option B also does 2.3 million for BMB. So South South Spring would get 2.95, and BMB would get 2.3. Right. So what you're saying is instead of five million going to Sprig and nothing going to BMB or 200 thousand going to BMB now 2.95. Option B kind of takes us into both categories. <laughs> I, you know, Sprig is important to me because it is it is a major artery. It, it's an opportunity zone, which could you know spur economic development and involvement. So they, there's there's really good opportunity on Sprig, and it's a conduit for a lot in South Cape, and it needs some some definite work because, like Shelley was saying, it's hard to go down there and not hit a car whenever you're driving around. Well, and to your point, man, that portion the 2.95 is the residential piece. Yeah. That's the worst piece. That's the piece that's, that's twice in both. Yeah. Seventy four yeah. hitting seventy four going south. Hitting seventy four going south. Right. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm starting to think option B gives us a good middle ground. It's it's not middle ground. It's either or. Yeah. I, mean, I would I would if we choose to go option B and go B and D. I still want to say that I would like to do it with the charge. That any savings realized from what is budgeted for land acquisition be used to move Sprig forward. Yeah, if we so were able to strike deals with whomever the landowners. In either case, the op the opposite project becomes the alternate, the first alternate. So yeah, I'd be fine with that. Would be if there's money available for you not spending contingency, then that would be the first project we would look to. In either case, you know. so so that doesn't happen. So like the, the first alternate, it has to happen a lot. No, yeah. I don't know really what's happened in. in we, we've well, had we, but we've never ever. we've never done an alternate project during that yeah. time. Okay. Honestly, I mean, just. But like you know, going forward, I know that that's just a big push for us in Sprig. Is you know, can we find those grants? Can we update the lighting? You know, all those little things. And, and the city staff has always been just really solid at being able to to, to write those grant programs and find those dollars when we need it. Yeah. Two point one million dollars worth. <laughs> well, it might you know, it, it, it's it might not be full two point one one million, but at least it's you know we could try for something. I, said, I don't know what kind of. I mean, we're not even. Talking about grants for B and D, 
I don't know what kind of grants and things are out there for the porch and, and some of those things with, with, with Julian being on. I don't know. We don't know. I mean, you know, so I mean, I could flip the, the grant thing and, you know, <coughs> anyway. Well, we, we, I mean, yes, and we could talk Port, about it. Free and D also, which, which we were just declined a, a grant for. Um, I mean, why, why was that? Did we know? Too much local match required. We didn't have it, so we did not have it. We weren't able to. Yeah, but I mean, why? Why did they decide not to give the grant? You know, why were they not supportive? Was it simply because we didn't have the the, the guaranteed match, or was it? And, I don't think they gave us. The other, no, the other projects were higher. Than, than ours did. I mean, if our priority would have been that portion, I we wouldn't be have or the northern portion. I, I would have assumed we would have taken. I'm just curious. Uh, I've asked several times, I'm, I'm, Bob, uh, I want to ask a third time, what, let's state what, what, is the, what is the urgency, or why, why include BMD in TTF6? Why not? And again, I, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just add, I, I fully appreciate the comments you and, and several in the audience have made in terms of not squashing development. I don't, no, one is, no one is talking about doing that. Um, but in making choices, why why do we choose VMD right now? Because if we don't do some major work there to keep it moving, then it's going to sit back a number of years. And, and why is that a, and a big deal? Economic development is a tool that drives every city, not just Cape Girardeau. I, I you understand gotta realize, that. I agree. You got to realize that that Cape Girardeau being a regional hub is really unlike a lot of cities our size around the state of Missouri. In that when you think of a city of 40,000 people and every day there's 90 to 100,000 people here during the week, and it, all that extra sales tax drives everything that we do. It drives TTF, it drives capital improvements, it drives parks and rec. If we slow that down, and those people go someplace else, then that begins to fall. It's vital that we keep that economic development growing and keep it and keep it moving. Okay, how how will this contribute to that? Because there's a lot of there's 55 or more acres down there sitting right along the interstate that are perfect for development, and it won't be developed if there's no road there.
just want to commend the work of the TTF committee because as frustrated as I was, it was a, an exchange of all or nothing for one or the other, but it's very obvious why they put it on our plate. <laughs> you know, I never thought of that way, but sure I, I never that's, really, that's really true. Um, I, yeah, it's, I would funnel as much money down to the redevelopment of downtown in, in South Cape as I can. I, I just look at being a steward of taxpayer dollars, which is what we're up here to do. I, I always, and people hear me say this, is for a capital investment using tax dollars, I, I look at it as measured on three things. And one is, will it generate revenue? One is, will it create efficiencies and cut expenses? Or is it a new service offering to the area? And I look at BMD, and it has the potential to generate new revenue in a time when we need revenue by bringing new people through housing development um, or commercial development on a very prominent piece of property with interstate frontage. And it has, it's a new service offering to the area as well. I, Sprig, I also, that's why I said I would like to see a committed effort and you'll be, the staff will can continue to hear me from that, or hear from me for that, for how are we going to move the Sprig project forward with other avenues besides if we, if the committee so chooses to go with option B, because I think it is important to keep Sprig moving forward, not just south of 74, but also north um, from William to 74 as well. So um, I just would like to see that concerted effort by staff, by council, future councils, um, to really keep moving that forward, even if we go that route with BMD, because it does, like I said, it, I feel like it has the biggest impact with our tax dollars to get a return on those tax dollars um, at this junction. Uh, Can I get, I would like to give staff some direction. Uh, Mayor? <laughs> yes. I think at this point it would be more appropriate if we would actually have a motion. I think it's enough, to, it's close enough that I would feel more comfortable. I'd make a motion. Motion not, not in this, we can't do it in no. this session, but we'll have to do it in a regular session. Yes. Oh, I forgot okay. that we're still in study session. We are. Uh, <laughs> and it's a new record. Yeah. yeah. And at this point, are there any appearances from anybody for any item not on the agenda other than what we've already talked about this evening? I wasn't expecting the first <laughs> Okay, you all know Ramona Bailey, right? Ramona Bailey. Um, so actually, I didn't even really look at the agenda, but do y'all have anything to talk, say about India Park? I kind of want to know what everybody's views were individually on that, why I know the white parts are not there, or back room is not there right now. But as far as the plans for that and uh, kind for, of... I didn't understand. For what part? Indian, Indian, Park, Indian, Park, 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 Indian Park. The restroom in Indian yes. Park. I just want to see where we were on that and kind of get everybody's view personally on the park, the bath, the park having a bathroom. Like, are you kind of for it? Are you like I against think it? Every, I think everybody on this council was for it, and that's why it was part of Parks and Rec Stormwater. Okay, so like, do you have like a groundbreaking thing? Like, where, or are you just going to set up something that's open? That, that lady right, right there, there would I be a. Respond. I know, but sometimes, you know, I, I get a, an unclear answer. So mm -hmm. I wanted to have a clear, vivid answer that I, not just for myself. I don't know that we can give you an exact For your name. own, like your own personal view on this. Let me, I'll give you my. Whenever we were looking at Parks and Rec, PRS2, it was a, after talking with, um, well, it was important to me that we did stuff to Indian Park and that we put aside money to do two other newer parks, uh, take Rainy offline and have enough money to put two new, was it, was it two? Yeah. Two new parks and acquired land as part of that too. So I, I don't think it wasn't, it wasn't ever my intent to not do anything with Indian Park, and we put money, Julia. We are currently in site development for a restroom location. So we issued a task order to Bowen Engineering um, to determine where the best location is for 
utilities, electric, things of that nature. So they are actually developing a site plan for the restroom. Uh, the restroom we should order probably within the next month. So it should be. That, so yeah. it's it's within I would say probably a minimum of three to four months before we can get it installed. And not being abandoned or anything like that whatsoever. That was. It's not, yeah. you know, well, this, I, I was kind of curious where you're going with that. Is, like, what are you going to do? I'm like, well, wait, no, wait. I just wanted to know. This really does take quite some time, especially when it comes to moving through all these city, you know, getting engineers and all that. When I was working to get lights out of Cape Rock Park, it was amazing just how long it took just to get that process going. Did it going. take years? How long did that take? That long. <laughs> it took a really long time because you know as soon as we started digging a pole for some for some electric, we hit solid rock, and then you had to figure out what to do around solid rock. So it just you know a lot of times it doesn't take time. But just keep following up with us, and we'll try to give you as much uh, information as possible. I can tell you I was at the last Parks and Rec Advisory Board meeting, and it was a topic item that was brought up by Brock, who was giving status updates on upcoming projects. Okay, so, I was just thinking because the I think the last time that I had asked, they were. Uh, doing the site plan, so I, I know the park is not that large, <laughs> but I mean, how, I mean, I just don't see how, does, I mean, does it normally take months and years to develop a site plan for a, a bathroom? Well, that, that take years is that a normal does. process? Oh, that take years, years to develop takes, but in answer to your question about bathrooms, I think every park should have a restaurant. Okay. I was close to a park that doesn't have a restaurant. Other than a yeah. porta potty, and I think they all have to say. Yeah. yeah, I know. I just know that some of that uh, Indian Park is more is a really much used park than some. I know there's a park down the street from my house at Port Fayette. We don't really, you know, go to that much. If the, it's the kids just want to go down there, but, but, but as far as like out. having like events or something like that, Indian Park is used a lot, and so is Randy Park. And they're used a lot, so it was just... In answer to your question, though, I don't think it would be longer than three or four months. So we won't have to come down here and move roads with numbers big and four <laughs> It's already in the works. It's in the works. Okay, well... We're going to have it on order. You know, it's, it's a prefab, and, and so we're going to get it on order. And, yeah, are, are, are that's, and that was the, my next question. So, are, is that the type of bathroom that is in all the parks, or is this being is this a different type of bathroom? Now they just put one into Kiwanis. Mm -hmm. That one was put, and then there's is also it, one planned for the, the parking lot by the Red House for downtown. So, so on the south side of is that is, in my right? Are they all the same? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The one in Kiwanis, which just recently put in within the last couple of years, it's why it's so easy to install because it is a prefab restroom. Um, the one we have that we're just finishing up in Kapaha, um is a little bit larger restroom, uh, which we constructed, but it's servicing a much larger section of the park. So we usually set the restrooms <coughs> appropriately to the size of the park. Yeah, and they, do they really do. They prepare the ground foundation, and then these, these beautiful prefab restrooms just come and sit right down on top of it, and, and it only takes them not that long to get them up and running after they've actually gotten delivery of it. Okay, well, I'll be looking for that. I'm sure the rest of the residents in the, that area will also be looking forward to that, too. Right. Thank you. Believe me, but whenever we finally got our lights and our electric out of Cape Rock Park, there was like a small cheer that went up out in the restaurant. <laughs> because it, does, it just takes a long time to work through all of, the, all of everything. So it is, it is in the works. You're right. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, thanks for coming for a moment. Let's see you. Anybody else? If not, we'll have the agenda review. Yeah. For no public hearings tonight, uh, on the consent agenda, we have uh, uh, several second and third readings from last time. Uh, we have the, uh, the Quantus Drive study with the TEAP um, assistance program with the Ohio Healthcare Department, second and third reading of that. We have the record plat from Auburn Place. Um, and we have uh, the zoning change at 623 Perry Avenue. Uh, from R3 to C1, there next to uh, to the park. Uh, number. <laughs> we also have the housing the federal prisoners agreement. Uh, the second, third reading of that, and then we have uh, a resolution to uh, continue our contract services with the Cape Girardeau Indoor Summer Recruitment for Magnet. That's a continuation of that agreement uh, from uh, previous years. And then um, number seven is the uh, 4D replacement project, other 
parks project that uh, has been highly anticipated. I know uh, American Legion has really followed up on on that uh, continuing. So um, the awards of that contract. Any items on the consent agenda that you uh, would like to remove or? Okay. Um, I guess I'm new, uh, new ordinances and uh, is that number eight for that meeting? Uh, right. uh, <coughs> for the first one, we have a new ordinance. It will be a first, second, and third reading. Uh, this is the final, finally, our. Uh, um, <coughs> Amendment to the ARF contract. We've had uh, several of those. This is the final one, and we need to uh, have an emergency reading because this uh, needs to be done in a timely manner in order to get our final payment. So uh, we'll look at the first, second, third readings on that one. Um, and that will take a supermajority for, um, for approval. So that's fine. Um, then we have the uh, record plat for the, the uh, OTC second subdivision. Tonight, and uh, we have the uh, number 10 is the uh, one we talked about last time about uh, basically making our local ordinance regarding uh, the sales of tobacco the same as the new federal uh, law. This makes uh, 21 for any sale of tobacco. Uh, this mimics that, uh, that uh, directly from the federal statute. Um, and then um, the last one uh, is number 11, is uh, accepting another easement on Fountain Drive. Questions on those? No? Okay. Good. Yeah, but one is the uh, Golf of Rogers Board. I believe uh, we've had a couple to, to go over with that, and we'll cover that. And then our last. Our last one is the special city council meeting to declare the results of the February 4th uh, primary election. Um, they we suggested a 1.30 on Friday for that uh, meeting, so you might want to check your calendars and see if that uh, will work. I'll talk with most everybody and make that work. Okay. And then we will have a short closed session. Any questions? Thank I will put uh, another business, I'll put item 14 there, and I'll send it to uh, uh, the TTA. Anything else, anybody? If not, we will go into your regular session, and we'll have a call to order. Bruce? Yeah. Ryan Wilson, Jackson, Rob Fox. Here. Robbie Gard. Yeah. Here. Stacy Kinder. Here. Here. At this point, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Motion moved by Dan, second by Robbie. A motion to adopt the agenda as amended. As amended. Heading number 14. Heading number 14. All right, second. Second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, we have no public hearings this evening. Are there any individuals here to uh, make comments on items on the agenda this evening? If not, we'll go right to the consent agenda. Eric? Traffic Engineering Assistance Program Agreement from Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for the Kalanis Drive Corridor Study in the City of Cape Garden, Missouri. An ordinance authorizing the City Manager to execute a Traffic Engineering Assistance Program Agreement from Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for the Kalanis Drive Corridor Study in the City of Cape Garden, Missouri. Number 20-9, an ordinance proving record plan of Auburn Park Place 1, an ordinance proving record plan of Auburn Park Place 1. Number 10, an ordinance amending Chapter 30 to approve ordinances to the Cape Garden, Missouri by changing the zoning of property located at 623 Berry Avenue in the City and County of Cape Garden, Missouri from R3 to C1, an ordinance amending Chapter 30 to approve ordinances to the Cape Garden, Missouri by changing the zoning of property located at 623 Berry Avenue in the City and County of Cape Garden, Missouri from R3 to C1. 
number 20-11, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement between the city of Cape Girardeau, the Cape Girardeau Police Department, and the United States Department of Justice for the purpose of housing federal prisoners in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement between the city of Cape Girardeau, the Cape Girardeau Police Department, and the United States Department of Justice for the purpose of housing federal prisoners in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 20-14, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement for services with the Cape Girardeau Area Industrial Recruitment Association, aka Magnet, in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Number 20-16, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with the Edgewater Company Inc. for the 40 years of the placement project in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. You have before you the consent agenda? Motion to adopt. Second. Second by Robbie. Before we get started, I just want to say the 4D roof replacement, that is an incredible step forward for the parks department. <coughs> it's a, that, that is just a, a neat asset for the city of Cape Girardeau, and I'm really glad to see that that being checked off the list. Second that. Mm -hmm. That's good. Anybody else? Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Consent agenda passes. New ordinances. Bill number 20 15. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement to execute amendment number four to the state block grant agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission to fund the acquisition of an aircraft rescue firefighting vehicle at the Cape Cod Regional Airport. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute amendment number four to the state block grant agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission. To fund the acquisition of an aircraft rescue firefighting vehicle at the Cape Regional Airport. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute an amendment number four to the state block grant agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission to fund the acquisition of an aircraft rescue firefighting vehicle at the Cape Cod Regional Airport. So moved. Second. Motion by Murray, second by Nate. Any discussion? It's taken a long time to get this done, but it's finally going to get here. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 20-12. And no one's approving the record file of OTC second subdivision. First reading. So moved. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Robbie. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion, any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 20-13. In order to amend Chapter 17 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Cod, Missouri, regarding sales of tobacco to minors. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Nate. Any discussion? I have a question. <laughs> okay. Hey, see, the federal government, they got something right, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I could get, uh, I'm. <laughs> try not to be ornery about this, but I'm um, wondering what. If we don't pass anything, if we don't do anything, right. what what does it look like versus if we do pass this? Right. In, in get, terms of enforcement. Or if we get a complaint, then basically then we end up forwarding it to uh, for example, firearms or the other kind of right there, and that's really difficult. So it's yeah. it, it just allows our, our officers to respond to, to complaints. It just be a complaint based um, ordinance, and that's that's how that's that's the advantage to it. If it's a city ordinance, I think it will be taken care of quicker by our local authorities and we'll be waiting for Rebecca and mm -hmm. the federal government to do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of a big deal, right? We're, we're taking, uh, well, I, taking something away you know, that's been there that, for a long, long time. When we had that proposal um, come to us for Tobacco 21, mm -hmm. I knew it was, you know, it's, it, Missouri legislators talked about it for a while. The federal government's talked about it. It amazed me the federal government got something done so quick. Uh, and it's it's a it's a it's a problem, and it's it's a problem affecting the youth across the country. And they finally realized that and passed a good law. I think. Is there just one more question? Um, is there anything any question of this? perhaps changing or being tweaked at the federal level or even at the state level? Um, anything that works? Uh, is, there, is there some group mounting in, in Missouri a, uh, a state amendment to, to flout federal law on this, as, as far, we've seen? As, as <laughs> far as I know, there, <coughs> there is no organization that's working to uh, 
in contrary to what the federal government has passed. Now, there may be some organizations that try to take it even further. And if that happens, then we would bring whatever changes would happen in the future to the council at, the, at that point. But this is just to, uh, to make our ordinance coextensive with federal law and make it so that we could prosecute a violation for that in municipal court as opposed to waiting for the federal government to, to do it, which is pretty unlikely. I didn't like it when Tobacco 21 came in because of the whole adult and, and this kind of, I, didn't, I never thought this would happen like this. I can't say I still 100% agree, but it was mandated down from the federal government. So. Any other discussion? Any other questions? No. No? Okay. Uh, if not, we're ready for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Or nay. Nay. That's all we want. Take that, Trump. Bill number. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bill number 20 17. I know. Sorry. An ordinance accepting a permanent utility easement from William D. Viet and Sharon L. Viet. I hope I pronounced that right. For 2522 Bouton Drive in the city of Cape Drums. Second. Motion by Robbie, second by Dan. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. And it looks like our appointments to the golf course advisory board are two incumbents who both indicated their willingness to continue to serve, and that is Cindy Gannon and Mark Matthews. Make a motion to accept. Second. Motion made by Robbie, seconded by Nate. Any discussion? Not all those in favor of signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, motion to set a special city council meeting to declare the results of the February 4th, 2020 primary election. And that has, we've talked about 1.30 on Friday, February 7th. So, uh, so February 7th. So moved by Dan. We, need a, a we don't really need to vote on that, it's just a consensus, I think. I think he said February 11th. February 7th. <laughs> okay, I've seen it both ways. It's Friday, February 7th, after the election on Tuesday the 4th. They have promised the results here by 1 o'clock, and we're going to be at 1.30 and verify. Friday the 7th. The motion was made by Dan. Right here, second. Second. Second by Robbie. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, item number 14, which we added, was uh, to reach some kind of consensus on uh, TTF 6. I make a motion to adopt option B that includes the MD. Okay. Go here, second. Second. Second by Dan. And, you know, this is this is an option, and I'm just going to play the play the, you know, the the person trying to broker a deal. Uh, 2.9 or 2.9 million for spring and 2.3 million for veterans memorial draft. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Nay. I have uh, four ayes and two nays. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn to close session to discuss legal actions and litigation contrary to communication of the legal counsel pursuant to revised section Missouri 610-021. Second. You are adjourned to close session.